One of Pinterest's biggest trends predicted for 2026 is cabbage. And it makes sense. So today's video, we're going to be going over all of the 2026 predicted trends for gardening, why they are awesome and why you should get on board. And I will be doing a separate video on the 2026 trends to avoid, like the plague, because I think they're dumb. Let's get into it. The good 2026 trends involve not necessarily purchasing more, but making more happen with what you already have. So planting things that pull double or triple duty in some cases, which I love for us. So trend number one is low input gardening. I think there's going to be a huge uptick in not fertilizing or fertilizing less. And this is not only supported by the fact that people have less, less purchasing power. Let's face it, groceries are expensive. Life is expensive right now. So putting fertilizer onto things doesn't make any sense. And there are enough studies to support that actually the nitrogen levels or the overapplication of nitrogen is a very real thing, both organic and conventional gardeners and farmers. And therefore, that does result in diminishing yields and plants that are more susceptible to disease and pests because they are, have a softer tissue on them. So I think that low input gardening is going to see a huge surge here in 2026. So examples or ways that this can happen is obviously fewer feedings. So maybe you're only going to fertilize once, fertilize once or twice a year. Spacing, making sure that there's adequate space between plants so there isn't competition for nutrients resulting in nutrient deficiencies. And then also encouraging roots to dig for their fruit, for their food. So fertilizing less means deeper root systems and root systems that spread more. And so we would water according to that. I think those are kind of be the big three ways in which people are going to accomplish this. Next up is going to be more of a focus on soil structure and less on soil products. So instead of using miracle cures, Epsom salts, fish fertilizers, compost teas, the focus is going to be more on the physicality of the soil and for good reason. Aggregation, pore space, and compaction are probably the big three when it comes to not only the physical side of your soil, but the biological and the chemical side of your soil as well. And that is because I think people are beginning to realize that roots are more affected by lack of oxygen or proper amounts of oxygen and or the bulk density of your soil over the nutrient concentrations of your soil. And I think a lot of people are also realizing that maybe they've been over fertilizing or that these soils that already exist have more than enough nutrients. So I think there's going to be a big shift back to soil soil, mineral soil, over this organic compost manure potting soil type mix that we normally use and a big focus on the structure of soil soil, mineral soil, because we can actually develop aggregation structure in a soil over something that is just an organic compost or something that's piled on top. Next up is climate adaptive plant choices. So this isn't necessarily for just perennials. This could include things like shorter season crops in the form of peppers or tomatoes. Even, you know, Copenhagen cabbage is an early spring version of cabbage. I could see people who are having more unpredictable type summers will rely on shorter season crops. There are also maybe folks out there that are exp experiencing more sunburn, so they're going to go for something that is more durable when it comes to lighting or higher levels of light, so it doesn't sunburn as easily. There's also a lot of drought, so I'm sure there's a lot of people who are going to focus on drought-resistant plants. There's also areas of the world that are experiencing more rain than normal, so they're probably going to go for something that has a shallower root system, et cetera, and so forth. So I think people are going to pivot in that way. And the way in which they're going to do that is buying probably more local seeds, seed saving from their area that's already kind of experienced and been exposed to the conditions that they're exposed to, and then doing their research on what they're purchasing and why, rather than just grabbing anything willy-nilly off the shelf. I think I personally can say that normally I would just grab stuff off the shelf. I don't pay too, too much attention to the days to harvest, but I will say as of late, it makes more sense if you're really, truly trying to get better yields out of your garden. It does make sense to pay attention to those numbers because things aren't as nice as what they used to be. Last year's way too cold, for example, for tomatoes. 
So I could have benefited from like an early girl or a Manitoba. Those would have performed much better this year than my classic brandy wines, pineapples, exotic indigos, you know, that sort of thing. So I definitely think that that's going to be part of the future. Okay, so the next one is the Pinterest cabbage trend. So Pinterest published their 2026 trends and on it was cabbage. And so this trend list isn't like for gardening. It's just a trend list in general for 2026. And cabbage made the cut for both eating and for decorative purposes. So because of that, I did put a little list together of varieties that you can use for either decorative purposes or eating purposes and why. So let's start off with the decorative or the ornamentals versions. So this can include Oscar pink, red, white centers. So these are the ones that you see quite often in like fall arrangements. Then we have the peacock series, which are like the really frilly, dramatic leaf ones. And then we have the coral prince, coral queen. This again is like a really intense fall color. And then for edibles, we have the January king, which are green and purple leaves and they're very cold hardy. So they are something that you can plant now and put out in cold frames very early in the season. There's the red mam mammoth red rock, which is a deep purple. And this one's really good for storage, actually. So if you have a cold room or space in the fridge, then this is one that you can actually keep for extended periods of time. There's a the golden anchor, which is great for small, compact environments. So we're talking things like raised beds, container gardens, people just with limited space. Copenhagen is an early variety so it definitely something that you can harvest a little bit earlier i think that in 2026 the end of the debate between organic and synthetic fertilizers is over i think people have realized that they ultimately don't change much in a world of microbes or plant nutrient uptake and i think that the focus is going to be more so on results so what works actually works visually is what is going to be chosen rather than the ethical side of things. Not that there is major ethical implications to either one being applied responsibly. There's ethical implications for misapplying both organic and synthetics. Keep that in mind. But I think that it's going to be more focused on outcome, less focused on what feels good if that makes any sense at all. You have to let me know in the comments down below what 2026 trends you believe are coming and why you think that they are going to be good and something that we should take on as a team here in Geek Crew. We had a wonderful Christmas break, a wonderful Happy New Year's, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.